Hi everyone, today we're going to look at automatic bypass valves and where they go in your heating system. I'm actually going to fit this one today in this heating system because what they're for mainly is to help flow around the heating system, it helps prevent noise and also if you've got thermostatic radiator valves all over your house without a bypass link somewhere um, you could get pump burnout almost where the pump could be pumping every single valve would be turned off um, and you've got no flow through the boiler up whatsoever because all the valves are shut down well this little beauty is to kind of alleviate that problem so I'm going to show you a drawing now where exactly they would go on your system well here we have a couple of drawings with our valve in place and where it would go this is a combi system over here uh, and you can see where the valve is going it's going between the flow and return and it's to kind of open up so that if those valves were shut the thermostatic red valves were closed down um, the boiler would still maintain a flow and go back around on that little circuit there it would keep on moving and then as the valves opened up again that valve would automatically shut back down again allowing a flow through the radiators this is to keep a flow of water circulating around your system it helps prevent noise as well by the way uh, which is very good so that's a combi one over here we have the the open vented system type um, and again you can see that it's the same kind of configuration the flow comes out the valve goes there it bypasses it comes after the pump and it bypasses between the return and the flow off before the three-way valve and again it's it's to alleviate if those radiator valves were shut down uh, the, the water would have nowhere to go, the pump would be burning out, going nowhere and there'd be no flow across the boiler. A lot of modern boilers these days do require a flow of water to cross the boiler all the time or they will cut out all the time and you may be wondering what on earth is going on. Now we use an automatic bypass valve these days because the old fashioned gate valve as it were we used to use that was always at half open um, is not allowed by building regulations anymore because uh, they they permanently open and uh, you're always getting a bypass which means you're reducing the system efficiency so now you've got to have an automatic bypass valve so that's what that's all about but i think the automatic one is a good idea i mean i always used to put in obviously the old open gate valve uh, that was just partially open and allowed always to have a bypass but as i say they're banned kind of by building regulations now so we're going to move on and now i'm going to show you the system where it's going to go well this is the system that it's going to go into and as you can see here's our pump um, and it's coming along here and going into our three-way motorized valve it then goes off on the hot water side and then the heating side and bob's your uncle it does all the usual stuff now this has not got um, a bypass on so it needs one because we've got all thermostatic radiator valves on the whole system so this is something that's fairly critical here plus I don't like the fact that um, it pretty much goes straight into that valve and when that valve switching uh, there's probably slight restrictions there as it switches around so to alleviate that problem I'm going to put our valve in this leg here because what we've got is it's got to come in between the pump and the freeway valve and it's also got to come in to the return. Now, if you point the camera down that way, you'll see a pipe down the bottom there with a gate valve on it. That is our return. So that is the pipe we're going to link to. That is the return and that is the flow. You'll get more of the picture as I cut and um, show you how this is going to proceed. So first things first, turn obviously your tank off, your header tank and drain the system. Uh, make sure it's all emptied first. Don't forget when this job is finished you will have to refill and top up with inhibitor. Right, so we're all drained out now. I'm going to undo this pipe here because I think this is a good place for our tea to go. And pull that out. It should be nice and empty now. Yeah, it is. So I'm ready now to make a cut through there. Okay, right, I've started to strip a bit of pipe work out now, as you can see. Uh, and down the bottom here I've cut in a T-piece, uh, which is going to be the bit that goes up into the bypass valve in a second. Because you've got to think we've got to get from there um, up into this T before it goes into the valve. So I didn't bother showing cutting that piece. I'm sure you're capable of doing that and sticking a T on. Um, and we'll move on, I think, to the next stage, shall we? Right, so next section, I've made up um, this piece here with a T on it. I didn't want to bore you with making it all up, but as you can see, that is now going to go in this end from our pump and in this end for our motorised valve. And they should all pull in together and drop in like so. 
Okay, then we just do our nuts up and we've got our T on then. So I'm leaving loose so I can turn it around to get the angle I want to drop into the, uh, the valve in a second. So we do that next, I'll do these up and we'll show you that part next. Okay, so we're on the last leg of the journey now and I've made the valve up onto a two bits of pipe that I've already measured out, it should fit. And as you can see, it's going to go into the pipe down the bottom there. I don't know if you can tilt the camera there again. There's their fit in there, our two piece off to our return. And that is then going to go into there on this fit in here. It's going to, I'm going to move it all in a minute and get it fitted in. Now don't forget one important thing, that arrow, there it is, make sure that is going in the direction of the flow. Okay, so our pump is coming along there, it's pumping up here into the freeway valve, okay, and along and round to our heating and hot water. So it also has got to pump through our valve here and down back to our return. So if needed, the valve will open. See now that she's gone in, all I've got to do now is do her up there and down the bottom there on the T, as you can see there and um, our valve will be in. So once I've tightened these up, uh, we'll be all ready to uh, turn all our radiator air cocks off, our drain valve off outside, add inhibitor to our roof tank, um, and think about refilling it. If you're wondering what this is about here, um, this little cock here, um, you always get a lot of air just in this section here. Um, so I, I stick a bit of a tube in there and a hose pipe and blast it, and get the air out. Um, plus it's also good for just draining this little section out without draining all the radiators and I just have one of those on it because it's quicker I just put a bit of copper tube on there and open it up and let it out but that's just me that's nothing to do with this valve <laughs> but it's just in case you were wondering what it was okay so I'm going to tighten these up now and we should be nearly ready well there's the job there now all finished as you can see we've got our valve in there nicely now and our bypass should work nicely if needed now Okay, once we're up and running, and uh, before your boiler goes on, um, please take a note of the selected setting up procedure details here. Um, you just take a note of the pump speed and use the boiler manufacturer instructions to find the minimum flow requirement, all right. Um, and then the pump curve determine the available pump head, all right, where it's operating at the required minimum flow and the selected pump speed. Use the setting chart over here, okay, um, to set it up. Invariably, I mean, this is all okay, but I just tend to set it at the uh, easiest opening gap it's got, so that as soon as there's any, any shutdown in the system with those um, thermostatic rad valves, that um, it starts to open and let it, let it through. Take the pressure away from that boiler there. So that's it, that's about it, but that's all you've got to do. If you want to go for the technical, set it up properly. Um, it is worthwhile, I should be doing that with mine. Uh, but if you don't want to, you can just leave it fully open. It will still operate as an automatic valve. So, there we are, that is a bit of a longie, sorry about that, <laughs> but uh, if you do want to fit one of those automatic bypass valves, they are worth doing and you will get dividends in the long run, quite a running system and no problems about flow rates for the boiler, etc. So, worth doing if you want to get your hands dirty, get in there and do it. All right, well that's it for me. Uh, you know where to go, all of my usual stuff, Derek and 33. Thanks very much for watching, bye bye.